the, one of the main reasons outside of preparation for the, for the crisis, which is the National Sunday Law, no buy, no sell. One of the reasons why God says country living is because we are told in the book Christ Object Lessons. I forget the page. I think it's page 20, maybe it's 20 something, 20, 24, maybe 20. She says, the beauty of nature itself draws the soul away from sin to purity, holiness, and God. Nature itself, she says, draws the soul away from sin and worldly attraction to purity, holiness, and God. Nature is a lesson book. As we got the Bible as our lesson book, nature is the second lesson book that reveals the character of God. As the Bible does it, so does nature. Now think of it, you, you are striving for perfection. Why wait for the Sunday law? We already have odds against us. It's best if you want to develop that perfect character. Psalms 37, 37 says, Mark the perfect man. Oh, it's Christ's object lessons. Thank you. Page 24, paragraph 2. Now, I want you to also write down this quotation. Country living, page 13. Country living, page 13. Listen to this powerful quotation. Not one family in a hundred. Please tell me what is the percentage of that? What, 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 percentage, what percentage is that? It's less than 1%. Not, yes, not one family in a hundred can be benefited by residing in the cities. How many people can be benefited by being in the city? Not one in a hundred. Faith, hope, love, these are the things we need. Are far better gained in retired country places where there are fields, hills, and trees. So if you want faith, hope, love, happiness, if you want these character, characteristics which are the fruits of the Spirit, love is the first one. If you want to develop these things, the woman of God, the prophet is telling us, you cannot develop it in the country. She says not one in a hundred. What are we saying? We are saying, yes, true, we must be in the country because of the crisis, but above that, character development. Character development. I hope this, this study was clear, friends, and this is just an introduction. It is just an introduction to the issue of country living. This one, once even I, we are just speaking, but I hope this was clear. I'm going to pause now and pray. And we just pray that God will bring conviction to the hearts of everyone who might be lingering. And someone might say, this is what people say, I don't have the money. I, I don't have the money. Now let me, let me just share this with you. I'm not going to share my testimony. I don't want to take time. But we do not have the money as well. But by faith, you know what I'm saying? We were looking for land and we had nothing. And, we were, and by the way, it wasn't one day we looked. It was for years. Not, not years, years, but two years, I think, two, three, almost three. We were looking and we had not a sense. We were going to see property. And there was ox. I knew I had no, not, not, nothing. And the agents would ask me, how are you paying for it? Tell the agents we pay for the cash. I knew I had nothing. Someone says, but were you lying? No, 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 no. I understood that my father owns everything. And when the time is right, he's going to give me the money I need. And we kept looking until God gave us the property. How did we start? We had no money. By faith, we are looking. Someone says, but, 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 listen to this, friends. In order to get country property, I don't know what's, I don't know what's the currency in Canada. What, what is your currency? Our currency is rands. We, ours is rands. I know America's dollars, Canadian dollars. In order to get, in order to get land, you, it does not go with how much your currency. Someone says, I only have so much Canadian dollars. I only have so much rands. I only have so much US dollars. The currency of heaven is not rands, neither is it Canadian dollars. The currency of heaven is faith. What is the currency of heaven? Faith. Heaven operates faith. with faith. According to your faith, so shall it be. Not according to your rands, not according to your Canadian dollars. According to your faith, so shall it be. 
trust God by faith do your part and look for the land and God will bless you it's not God's will God will pay for it God will pay for it I want to ask a question in 1888 what was brewing there was two things based on our, our yesterday study please, uh, two things something was brewing within the world and something was brewing within the church to meet what was in the world can you remind me what was brewing within the world the vaccination <laughs> was Sunday law. okay I did not mention vaccination yesterday <laughs> I mentioned a Sunday law was brewing in the world but what was brewing within the church? What was God doing for the church at the time that the Sunday law was, 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 was picking up momentum? What was God doing for the church? What was he trying to do for the church? Remember, we Amen. Faith. Righteousness by faith. There were two men that God sent with that message, Wagner and Jones. Now, I believe that the Sunday law is brewing and there's too many, it's too many friends, too many prophetic events. Literally, there's just too many to show that. But God willing on Sabbath will show more. But I believe that we have come right back to 1888 in a sense. So what do I mean? In 1888, just before there was a Sunday law brewing, there was a crisis that the church had to meet. He said, what crisis the church had to meet? And the Sunday law was coming on the heels of that crisis. I want you to see what was it. It says, this year was on May 10, 2021. This article came out from the National Catholic Report. It says, the, it says paper vaccine campaigns offered punishments, rewards 200 years ago. So I wonder what 200 years ago would have been from 2021. Let's keep reading. It says, when popes were kings, when popes were king, they ordered all their subjects in the papal states to be vaccinated using punishments and rewards to convince the hesitants and making sure the poor and prisoners were inoculated as well. Okay, so... Back then, 200 years ago, the papal system forced upon the masses to receive the poison within them. Continues, it says, Vatican News recounted how a smallpox epidemic swept central Italy at the end of the 1700s and beginning of the 1800s, how Pope Pius threw, threw the full weight of his temporal power behind a vaccination campaign. So in the 1800s, late 1700s, early 1800s, there was a push from the papal system that the masses receive the vaccination. Do you know this is exactly what the current Pope is doing? Pushing that the masses receive the vaccination. So what happened in 1888, it seems that we are coming right back to the exact moment, or I would say history is repeating itself. 